Hey, it's Eric from Alabama. And it's Jerry in Boston, Massachusetts. We want to welcome our listeners from the United States and around the world. It's another Sunday podcast. Hey there, welcome back, my friend. Hello. How are you doing this afternoon? I am doing well. Good to hear. We missed you last episode. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I was busy. We'll talk about that. Yeah, okay. This has been an uh, interesting week that, that we're having. We're recording this. Just a few days from what will become one year since the world stopped, at least the United States stopped, with the COVID-19 pandemic. Can you believe a year? Yeah, I can. It's felt like two years. It Sometimes. I left my, uh, my last day in the office was on Friday, March 13th of 2020. And we have not been back since, and we are not sure when we're going back. So we're home. We know we know we're here until at least July, but after that, we don't know. Yeah, I remember when you called me because I was at the Arts Council. I was directing traffic um, for the people that were coming in to watch the show, and I think that morning I had gone to school at Montevallo, and they said well, we don't know if we'll be here next week. And I didn't know what they were talking about. And a couple of my other teachers said the same thing about how, you know, we don't know what's going on. We may we may be here next week. We may not be here next week. And my first thought was like, yeah, no school. <laughs> but sure enough, next week, um, I think it was sometime in the middle of that week, we went virtual and, uh, and so, yep, here we are. I can remember right around that, the, what was a year ago this week at the beginning, you know, we started to hear about more about this virus and, and, uh, it's spreading. And I think, I think at this time there was maybe 50 people who have died from this thing. And there was some talk about are they going to keep us? Are they going to make us work from home? What are we going to, what are we going to do? And I can remember coming in to the office about six o'clock on uh, on that Friday the thirteenth morning, and somebody handing me a manual and going, pack this and other things, pack this, pack that. This is probably going to be the last day we're going to work in the office for a couple of weeks. Yeah, it was always a couple of weeks. Yeah, we that, had no idea. And well, and see, that's the thing, you know, even in uh, oh, what was it like? I think even maybe during maybe I'm making stuff up here. Me, the history major that doesn't know history. But, um, you know, if you ever hear two weeks or to the end of the war, you're going to be a couple years. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a couple years. You know, it's like saying the war's going to be over by Christmas. It's like, yeah, yeah. You know, if they say two weeks, they really mean like a year or two. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was just, it was bizarre because the end of that day, people obviously left. And come that Monday, all sorts of issues, you know people who who didn't work from home I, I never worked from home so you know I had to get set up and I'm <clears throat> my office and I'm on Amazon buying keyboards and and uh, other things that I that I needed just to have the home office I had my work computers monitors and things but I was like frantically buying stuff getting it delivered it took me like a week to get settled and I was like, well, I don't know why I'm doing this because I'm going to be back to work in a couple of weeks. And <clears throat> it just it just went on and on and on. And then I had the opportunity about 
five months, six months later, to go back to the office for the very first time. Uh, I needed to um, need to go in for something, pick something up, or work for the day, or whatever it was. And it was the most eerie feeling to to be in a to be in a building that houses five thousand people, and to be only of maybe fifty is the strangest thing. Walking by people's desks, coffee cups still there, calendars still set to March 13th, and here it is now, like September, October, whenever it was. And I, you know, I wondered, how long does a tuna sandwich last in your desk? You know, I had to make sure that, you know, <laughs> um, any critters or anything. <clears throat> Luckily, no. But yeah, just very, very strange going in and, and just like the world just stopped, like just people got up and and left, like the Walking Dead, and not to uh, not to have yet returned. So, but one yeah, one year Friday the thirteenth. Um, well, it'll be Saturday the thirteenth, I believe. Twenty twenty one will be a year. So, just amazing. Things are looking better. Vaccines seem to be pumping out. Um, had a good clip. Uh, they're starting to open things up here in Massachusetts as we speak. Restaurants are now more capacity. Some time limits and things. There's some music being allowed in some restaurants and bars now. Bars, um, standalone bars are not open in Massachusetts. But performing Performance theaters and things like that are beginning to open. They're starting uh, in about a week. I think the sports arena here is going to start allowing fans in at a, like 10 or 12% capacity to start. Um, so things are, you know, there's some light at the end of the tunnel, and there's not another train. So, And hopefully we'll continue on that on that pace. We can talk a little bit more about that. A little bit later, a couple things that I thought we could talk about uh, today is, first of all, our listeners, and I want to throw a shout out to um, to our friend Taylor Bloom, who was uh, kind enough to post his episode on his YouTube channel and post our podcast out uh, out on his YouTube channel, which has driven our listenership up. So I want to welcome all of Taylor Bloom's fans to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed the episodes with Taylor, and you've had the opportunity to listen to some of our other episodes, and hope you'll stick with us. Eric and I have a lot of fun, sometimes just him and I talking, sometimes it's just me talking, and sometimes we have special guests. And Taylor will be back. Um, he's going to be a regular on our show if he will allow us to invite him, if he will accept the invitation, I should say. So welcome to fans of Taylor Bloom. And uh, from what I understand, his album's doing very well. Speaking of Taylor, uh, he mentioned, uh, Eric, on the last episode that he was directing a play in New York City and that he was uh, going to have some information for us. Uh, and uh, we now have that information. Well... What's going on with his with his play? He is directing a play called The Garden, and it is at the uh, Soho Playhouse in New York City, Manhattan. It's a live stream production. It's going to be from April first to April fourth, and people can go online and purchase tickets. We have a ticket link in the description of this episode. If you click on that and you purchase your ticket for whichever show date you want or dates that you want it is um going to be not your typical live stream kind of show it's not my understanding is from what taylor has said it, it's not going to be like a zoom meeting you're going to have the feeling not to pull the curtain back on this too much because we want people to obviously to go there but this is going to be a theater experience you are going to feel like you're in a theater in New York City 
which is kind of cool. But the play is called uh, the the Garden. Let me read the description of it. Actually, it's pretty nice, pretty cool. Next, in the middle of the woods, a cabin, long abandoned, but rediscovered by Joan and Sam. In a play on the periphery of realism, two storytellers must decide between staying or going, and what to do with the body. And again, it's April first. Uh, through the fourth that's quite an intriguing description it 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 is it's very mysterious and at the end of the show each of the shows it says a talk back with the artist will directly follow uh the show so i have uh i will be in the audience Again, April 1st through the 4th, tickets are available right now, and the link to purchase those tickets is uh, is in the description of our episode right here, as well as all of Taylor's episodes, uh, episodes 3, 4, and 12. So, All right. I thought it would be kind of fun to kind of hit the mailbag, as they say, and maybe read a few uh, emails and comments that we have been getting and, and encourage people to... Send us an email or make a comment wherever you might be listening to us. The email address, it's another Sunday podcast at gmail.com. We'll be happy to read it on the air. And if you want to be on the show, please let us know that too. If you have something that's interesting to say, or know somebody that has something interesting to say, please email us, let us know. We'd love to have them on the, on the show. So you want to kick it off, Eric? Uh, we got uh, we've got some letters here we can we can read, and uh, why don't you uh, why don't you start off? Yeah, this first one is from a Boston listener, and he's referencing the um, the Tom's episode on candle pin bowling, and he says, or she says, I'm not sure. But this listener says, I personally was disappointed in Tom's episode. Thought he would have given more insight into Candlepin and more history of its establishment's journey. I have uh, an email on the same episode, kind of contrast to that. And this was a listener um, that that wrote, I'll be candid. I cringed at today's topic, Candlepin Bowling, but surprisingly I found it very informative and very entertaining. He, meaning Tom... Is a wealth of knowledge and a pleasure to listen to. Congratulations on another great podcast. We got another um, comment, and this was about Ryan Matthews' episode, in uh, which he talks about his ALS Foundation. And this listener wrote, This was excellent, and I am in awe of all that Ryan is doing for those affected by ALS. I have no doubt your mom would be so proud. God bless and all my best in your efforts. And then we actually received another email on Ryan's episode. Ryan's episode had done very well, and Ryan has shared his episode with his his followers, and we appreciate that. And some of those folks have left some comments and thanked us for that episode. And this is just one email that came in from a listener. Hi, Jerry and Eric. I'm writing to thank you for the wonderful episode you released with Ryan Matthews. I was deeply touched by his heartfelt story of his mother's battle with ALS and his devotion to her while she lived with it and now to her memory with the creation of the Susie Foundation. As someone who had lost his mom too soon, I know the pain and joy that comes when talking about your loss. I thought both hosts asked thoughtful and insightful questions, but more importantly, you let Mr. Matthews talk uninterrupted so he could truly express his feelings. An episode, well done. Congratulations. So thank you to that listener. And we have another listener in New Hampshire that wrote, I like the interview with Taylor Bloom. He is the real deal. Excellent voice and good song material. Good work. Got quite a few comments on Taylor's episodes. Uh, on his first appearance, uh, this was excellent. I enjoyed both parts. Loved Taylor's original that he performed in part two. Makes me want to hear more of his material. I can't wait to hear the album. And one of the last comments, uh, 
must be somebody from up north. He says, very, or she says, very entertaining, you guys. Taylor, lots of success to you. <laughs> you guys. I think of the Goonies. Hey, you guys. So, <laughs> and uh, just some general comments that people have thrown out on YouTube or on the various uh, platforms that they listen to. Uh, I enjoy the conversation, guys. Looking forward to next Sunday's podcast. Um, somebody wrote nice memories, great interview, great show. Uh, and the last comment here says, I love the show. How old is Eric? 13. <laughs> No, 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 no. So you have a fan. Mm, is she single? No, I'm just kidding. I, I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's male or female. It just says, Love the show, how old is Eric? <laughs> I told you I'm thirteen. Okay. Yeah. It's not it's not how old you are, it's how old you feel, right? That's what they tell me. That's what they tell me. <laughs> All right. Well those are just some of the comments and uh and emails that we have received over the last little while. So thank you all for sending that in. Please keep them coming. We want to hear your comments and your suggestions as well, what you like, what you don't like. And again, if you have anybody or yourself want to be on the show, we welcome you to join us. Just shoot us an email at uh, it's another Sunday podcast at gmail.com. So Eric, you missed, uh, you missed the last episode. Um, You've been obviously extremely busy, and we did an episode with Paul Hartford, talked about um, his involvement with Little League, and he, he is a huge fan of um, of Carl Yastrzemski, uh, the Boston Red Sox, and Boston Red Sox, he's a huge Boston Red Sox fan as well. He asked a question at the beginning of the episode, I'm not sure if you had a chance to, to listen to it yet, but he wanted to know if you missed the episode because you knew he was coming on as a Red Sox fan, <laughs> and he wanted to know if you are a Yankees fan, and that's why you didn't join us on that episode. Uh, well, uh, tell him that um, that down here in the South, we don't like Yankees. No, just kidding, just kidding, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. No, um, I'm an Alabama fan, and I don't really know anything about baseball or um, down here in Alabama, it's college football. We don't, we don't even really do... I mean, some people some people do like Super Bowl parties down here, um, but it's just I mean, it's not really. I mean, I don't know. A Super Bowl party down here is kind of like whatever. We're just gonna have fun and watch football. But Alabama football down here is like Alabama and Auburn. That is the biggest thing. In Alabama and you know usually the Iron Bowl between Alabama and Auburn that is probably one of the biggest days of the year it is one of the biggest days of the year it's right after Thanksgiving and it's like you can you can um, when the Iron Bowl is going on you can go you know drive through town or take a walk through town and it's like there's tumbleweed blowing down the street there's you know nobody <laughs> on the streets it's like a ghost town you know because everybody is inside watching the, the or, iron Bowl. or they're at the game right i mean it's a huge stadium or at the there. game yeah yeah, yeah it's yeah. big so so no i you know um as far as uh as far as uh you know, baseball and the Yankees and the Red Sox and all that stuff goes, uh, you know, I don't know anything, you know, um, so. Well, when you listen to that episode at the end, he has a message for you at the very end of that. So, uh, I'll let, uh, oh, gosh. I'll leave it up to you to, <laughs> to listen to that. No, it's, it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's actually kind of funny. So, uh, so Paul, when I know you're listening out there. Um, thank you of course for joining us and there's your answer. He is, not a Red Sox and or a baseball game necessarily. You yeah. know, sports like like Auburn and Alabama uh, is <clears throat> very, um, it's huge. And I know uh, down in Kentucky, specifically <laughs> Louisville. It's they, just funny to hear you say down in Kentucky for because for <laughs> us it's up in Kentucky. <laughs> Took me a minute. <laughs> um, 
in in the great state of Kentucky, actually the Commonwealth of Kentucky, uh, they have um, in Louisville has, of course, they have the um, the Cardinals over there, and and it's a big deal. Well, basketball, college basketball in general, uh, with U of L, University of Louisville, and um, I think it. Kentucky University or University of Kentucky. See, I'm not a huge college sports fan, but UK and and um, and U of L or KU and U of L. Uh, it's it's just as big as as uh, a rivalry as Alabama and and Auburn. Uh, so the college sports we don't we have college sports up here, not to the extent of that. Up here we get the Red Sox and the Bruins and the Celtics, and that seems to be. And of course the New England Patriots. Um, that's the big stuff. So it's all pro sports up here, not not so much college. But we do have some great teams with Boston University, Boston College, Northeastern Hockey is wonderful. Harvard Hockey is great. They do a whole thing in uh, typically in March, call it the Bean Pot Tournament, where every year it's the, four, it's the same four teams. It's Harvard, BU, uh, BC, and Northeastern get together, and they play for the Bean Pot Championship, and uh, they pack the arena. Do they the, win uh, like a pot of beans? It's uh, I don't think there's real beans in it, but it's a pot. It's oh, a okay. bean pot. Yeah, that's why they call it a bean <laughs> pot. And, it, and I'm, I'm not sure how many years this has been going on, but generations probably, uh, that these four, it's always these four teams every year. And uh, they, they play here at the um, at the TD Garden, home of the Celtics and the Bruins. And they pack the arena. In fact, I was going to uh, try to go one year, and you just cannot get tickets. You just can't get tickets for this. It's a it's a huge, it's a huge event. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. different. It's weird how like each region or each state has its own sports that it focuses on. You know, and uh, and I don't I don't know. It's just kind of cool. We have we have we have interesting traditions here. I think we talked about this on one episode about our high school sports. Uh, specifically football and every Thanksgiving there is these Thanksgiving games throughout the state it's the last game of the season of the regular season for the high schools out here and it's always the same team Wakefield plays Melrose for example and uh, every high school plays the same team every year on Thanksgiving and a lot of places like in in the town I grew up in They'd have a big pancake breakfast, all-you-can-eat pancake breakfast. And then the game would start like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And then everybody would leave and head home and stuff their face with turkey, you know. Uh, but that's uh, that tradition continues every year. And I don't think it's like that in every in every state, but I'm not I'm not sure how they how they do that. But Thanksgiving to big uh, high school football. We have come to the end of this episode can you believe it we have no. I, I kid <laughs> you not we have we have uh we've come to the the end of this end of this episode i know some of our episodes have gone on long and just to let folks who are listening know that some some people have said oh my god an hour i don't know you know how i can listen to this uh or if i can listen to the whole thing in one sitting um we try to keep them within about 30 minutes but when you've got guests on with great content and and just having a blast like we have had i just can't edit all the good stuff out and it and it uh, doesn't make a lot of sense to break it into multiple episodes i know we did that once uh, because we had two different topics uh, same guests but two different topics and uh but most of the time we just sitting here rapping and we look down and go oh my god we're we're two hours into this thing. And how, do I, <laughs> how do I knock this down to 30 minutes? You just can't. And, you know, so it comes out an hour, an hour, 15, whatever. Um, but that's the beauty of podcasts. You know, you just press pause <laughs> and you can come back to it and listen to it whenever whenever you're free. Um, I know some of the um, some of the services out there uh, will actually pick up where you left off. So, But we thank everybody who's, um, again, who has been following us and listening and please continue to to do that and just one more one more time taylor bloom again directing the garden at the soho 
Playhouse in New York City, April 1st through the 4th. The link for the tickets is in the description. Please click on it if you're interested in checking out that that play. Well, Eric, I think next episode we're going to talk about what's been going on in your life the last few months that oh we just man get don't to. bore people like that we, <laughs> we didn't get to today so uh thank you nice to have you back it's uh it's always wonderful talking to you unfortunately i can't see you today because of technical difficulties but you sound good, good. so i'll leave the i'll leave the uh i'll leave the last word to you how's that well just remember that Whatever life throws at you, roll with the changes. It's Another Sunday Podcast is produced by Eric and Jerry. Technical advisor, Tom Billadu. Music composed and performed by Tom Blaze. Join us again next week. Never know what we're going to talk about. That's it for this episode of It's Another Sunday Podcast. Thanks for listening.